<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video we're going to be revisiting and talking with our friend here, the PlayStation 2. Now, the PlayStation 2 is a quite legendary system. It sold extremely well. Many people have loved it, have grown to love it, or have been rediscovering their love for it by picking up old PlayStation 2s or just rediscovering them and figuring out ways to play games on them again. Yes, I mean, sure, there is the disk drive that you can just play a disk on standard, but let's also be real here. A lot of people don't really want to mess around with disks these days, and a lot of times these disk drives do have issues, unfortunately. Thankfully, the PlayStation 2 does have several different methods that you can load games on, thanks to the modding and homebrew and, you know, third-party development community. Now, I'm going to cover a few of these here real quick. The first one of which is, well, if you have a modified system in any way, either soft modded or hard modded, you can find a way to play your games from a disc, or even just completely legitimate, just play them from a disc. No issue there. That's actually how the PlayStation 2 is designed, so you're not going to run into all too many issues with that. Now, you also have the ability, if you have a fat PlayStation 2, you can get yourself a network adapter, hook it up to the back here where this expansion bay goes, and you can physically hook up a hard drive to that and load games from the hard drive to play on the PlayStation 2. It works quite well, and it's probably my favorite way of playing games. It's just easy enough to turn on the PlayStation 2, load up OPL, and load into your hard drive full of games right there. Now, since it is a network adapter, as I've said, and if you have a slim PlayStation 2, you're not going to have this right here, but the network adapter, as well as a slim PlayStation 2, will have a Ethernet port back here. You can actually use that port to connect to a local network share from your PlayStation 2 that has PlayStation 2 games on it and play PlayStation 2 games over your network. And it seems to work pretty well for the most part. But let's be real here. A lot of people don't want to mess around with discs. A lot of people don't want to mess around with networks. And there's other people who just don't want to track down a fat PlayStation 2, get a network adapter, and throw a hard drive in there. Understandable for whatever reason. So another good option, or maybe convenient option, that many people have used is USB. Yeah, there's USB ports on the PlayStation 2. You can take a USB drive, set it up properly, put your games on there, and play it on the PlayStation 2. Sounds like the best option, right? Unfortunately, I typically tell people this is the worst option. In terms of convenience, yes, this is great. I mean, 2022 and beyond, people are still using USB drives. Easy enough to find. However, the issues come into play of speed and, well, speed. This is the slowest method of playing games. And when you're playing games over USB on a PlayStation 2, you're going to experience choppy cutscene and FMV playback. You're also going to experience longer loading times, and you're probably going to run into other compatibility issues just with the nature of, you know, using homebrew applications and playing games in a way that isn't the official method, which would be, you know, of course, playing off of a disc. So you'll probably run into some compatibility issues, but even if you don't have those, you are going to run into the speed related issues because the USB ports on here are only USB 1.1. Now what if there was an option that didn't require a disc, didn't require network compatibility, didn't require tracking down a fat PlayStation 2 and putting a hard drive in it, and still had the convenience of USB? Well, that exists at this point. Through uh, one of these ports right here. Yeah memory card. You would think that it would be slower than USB, but it's actually not. So all of the issues I talked about with USB in terms of choppy videos, choppy FMV playback, as well as longer loading times, those are actually not an issue when you load up games through the memory card port. You would think it's slow because really this is just for saving and loading games for the most part, like your game saves, but would you believe that it's actually faster than the USB port? And if you don't believe it, well, we're about to prove you wrong right here, because that is the case. And this is all thanks to two different things. The first of which being a piece of software called OPL, short for Open PlayStation 2 Loader. 
and the other thing, which is the MX4 SIO project, which is what we're going to be looking at today with the MC2 SIO. Now, TNA had gotten this thread started here in 2020, but work was actually happening in regards to this project prior, all the way back in 2018. It states by WISI as well as Maximus32 for the connections and drivers. Then Decket had made some initial PCB cuts or models, and another unnamed user had shared some case samples. Finally, with Takashi making some new and professional PCB renderings. So a lot of this was going on here prior to the MC2 SIO being released. Now, if you wanted to explore this and do it on your own, you really had to, well, do it yourself. It shows the schematics right here, and it also shows people who had gotten this working, but they really had to use their own memory cards and really just sacrifice a memory card in order to do this. Now, you could also get a printed circuit board fabricated and then set up and everything, and it does look a lot cleaner here. However, this does still require some manual assembly, of course, soldering and such, and you would have to put it into a memory card case and cut it a little bit to, of course, allow for the SD card or micro SD card. So this is a lot that people were wanting, but not everybody was understandably either comfortable with or wanting to perform. And while this is similar to something we've seen, such as a SD to Vita, now we have seen something like this in regards to the SD to Vita in which you can use a micro SD card on a PlayStation TV or PlayStation Vita, or even something such as a SD Gecko, which this is actually more apt to what we're using here. The SD Gecko is for the GameCube, and it allows you to use a SD card through the memory card slot on the GameCube itself. While these are pretty awesome solutions for the accompanying systems, unfortunately, we don't have any reputable, easy-to-find, prefabricated versions of the MX4 SIO unlike the SD to Vita, or as I said earlier, the SD Gecko. In comes Helder, who came onto the scene with the MC2 SIO, which is his own take on the MX4 SIO adapter for micro SD cards selling for 20 US dollars. I will also say, don't let the 3D printed shell put you off. This thing is solid, like literally solid. I'm quite impressed with the build quality. Before we delve too far into this, I do also want to thank Helder for sending over the MC2 SIO. Now do keep in mind, this has been sent to the channel for free for review, and it was only the MC2 SIO that was sent over. I am not being paid for this, and any opinions that I give here are all on my own. So again, this was just sent over for purposes of review, but I do want to thank Helder for this. Now let's go ahead and get into the recommended setup for the MC2 SIO. First of all, it is recommended to use free McBoot as your method of booting into your PlayStation 2 with an exploited state and getting all your homebrew up and running. Now you can use some other options here and I am going to cover that later in the video, kind of just touch up on it, but the recommended setup really seems to be using a memory card with free McBoot. And to touch up on this as well too, you're really going to want to use an official memory card. If you can get one of these official Sony memory cards that is MagicGate certified, that's going to be your best bet. If you can't get a Sony one, getting a third party one that is official MagicGate certified would be your best bet. I would never recommend using any of these clone cards for free McBoot in general, just because free McBoot is very touchy and in my experience really hasn't worked all too well on these clone cards. Yeah, I know it says Magic Gate, but it doesn't have Magic Gate on this. This is not official Magic Gate certified. This is a bootleg clone memory card at this point. So I would never recommend these, not only just for this, but for free McBoot, period, if that's going to be what you're using. So for your PlayStation 2, you will need that memory card with free McBoot on there in slot one. You're also going to need the MC2 SIO in slot two. And you're also going to need a SD card. This needs to be formatted to FAT32 with 16 kilobyte clusters. If you're needing to know how to update to this specific version of OPL, I actually have a previous guide showing how to update OPL. The only difference is going to be that you're going to need a specific version of OPL here as opposed to the ones in that former guide. In order to get this, you can come over to Helder's site, which will be linked down below in the description, and it's going to be his listing for the free McBoot card itself. You can come down here, and there's going to be the OPL and free McBoot installation. 
this is the file that you want to download. The specific build you're going to need is going to be within the free mcboot install directory. Install boot. It's going to be this opnps2ld.elf. Again, this is going to be the specific build that you're going to need. So you can just use this one in place on that OPL update video if you're going to follow along, and you should be just fine. This archive also comes with a open ps 2 ld 2elf and this one is specifically for consoles which are a model number of 75,000 or higher. So that's really a newer slim. So if you check your model number and it's one of those higher model slims, 75,000 or higher, make sure you use the openps2ld2.elf. However, the other thing that will make your life easier, which is going to be a little bit different, is this OPL directory. This just has a few configuration files right here, and for this, you're just going to want to make sure you transfer this directory itself onto a USB drive, and when you're installing and updating OPL, you're going to want to also copy this onto the root of your memory card. Now, it's also worth noting that the MX4 SIO project at this time is only for PlayStation 2 games. So if you're trying to get your PlayStation 1 games up and running through OPL at this time, they are not going to work on the MX4 SIO project. This is just for PlayStation 2 games. Now let's talk about my thoughts on the MC2 SIO. First of all, let's talk about the good here, and there is a lot of good to talk about. Now, one thing I did say that I was going to bring this up later, despite free McBoot being recommended, in my testing I've actually been able to utilize this with other entry methods as well with no issue. It seems to be as long as you're able to get OPL up and running, you should be fine. Now, back on my slim right there, that is a 90,001 model, so it cannot run free McBoot. I am running Open Tuna on there. I've been able to run OPL with no issue, and I've been able to use my MC2 SIO on there with no issue. It just seems to be if you're going to be using free McBoot as your entry method, this is typically the most popular. It's going to be the most accessible for many people, and if you're going to be using free McBoot, you really should be using a Sony or just a Magic 8 certified memory card, but that is to say that I've been able to utilize other exploit methods as well too without any issue. Now in regards to getting the micro SD card set up, there's no secret sauce, there's nothing special in regards to this setup here. If you know how to set up a USB drive with your games for OPL, you can do the same thing with the MC2 SIO and your micro SD card on there. So I actually have a video covering how to load up your games and everything and play games from a USB drive uh, for OPL. And if you follow that through, it is really the exact same steps, like quite even to the point where I can take my USB drive setup, copy and paste it over to my micro SD card, pop it into the MC2 SIO, and it works just fine. The setup, the file structure, everything on there is the exact same. So just follow a guide in regards to setting up games for USB loading on OPL, and you'll be just fine on here. The only real difference is going to be if you're using this specific version of OPL, you'll be just fine. But if you're going to be using the main branch of OPL, you're going to have to go into your settings, and when it goes to the BDM devices, you're going to have to manually enable MX4 SIO, because that's not going to be enabled by default. Now, in my experience, once you set this thing up, it works. <laughs> that's it. It works. And, and that's the beautiful thing about it, right? Now, I was having the most success and it's been recommended to use those specific versions of OPL that you'll be able to find that are really tailored for this and that you can find on Helder's site. Once I was using those, I was able to boot up games with little to no issue. I was able to play my games with properly playing FMVs, cutscene playback, uh, even my loading times were great as well too. And the funny thing is, I, I think I took this for granted because I was playing games on this, I was like, oh yeah, the loading is okay, sure. Then, you know, just for some testing, I went back to USB and I'm like, wow, the loading is so slow on here, my goodness. So once you get it all up and running, it works, it's great, and <laughs> That's all you can ask for on there, really. Now, do keep in mind that these specific versions of OPL that I am talking about here, the ones that you can find on Helder's site, are really the ones at this moment in time that are going to work properly with the MC2 SIO. I was able to get this to work on the official branch 
of OPL. Like, I was using, I think, the latest pre-release of 1.2.0, but I also did some testing with 1.1.0, and I'll get into that there, but really, if you want the best success and best experience, you should be using those specific versions of OPL that I highlighted. Again, you can download them over at Helder's site. Now, this isn't absolutely perfect because there are games that will have compatibility issues. If you'd like to review this or even contribute to research on this, there's a full Google Sheets document the community is working on to document compatibility. The link for this is going to be down below in the description as well. Now, it's not only good stuff here, there's also some bad that I do have to highlight. First of all, in regards to OPL, you do have to use some specific versions of OPL. Now, I'm not a developer on this, I don't have all the code in front of me here, and I cannot tell you the intricacies of what specifically is going on with these specific special builds of OPL, but really, there's going to be the builds that are linked on Helder's site. And there's going to be two of them. One of them is going to be if you have a older PlayStation 2, and the other one is going to be if you have a PlayStation 2 that is a model 75,000 or higher. And if you just use whichever build for whichever system you are using, it should work just fine. Now, this is not to say that this does not work on the main branch of OPL. I actually, as I mentioned, was able to get this to load up. Like, I was able to pop this in, I was able to get games to show up, um, but one big thing is that games do not save. I'm not talking about saving configuration or whatever it is, I'm talking about your actual game saves. Like, game saving is broken if you're using the MX4 SIO project, so like an MC2 SIO, on the official branch, at least at this time on OPL. There's also some compatibility issues with games as well too. There seems to be more than these specific like special builds of OPL that I've been highlighting. However, do keep in mind that one, there's still a lot of development that's going on with this, so I'm sure this is going to improve with time. The second thing is going to be for whatever reason, if you enable pad MU in settings, this seems to alleviate a whole lot of issues with actually playing and booting your games on the main branch of OPL. So that's good to know. So if you want to try that, I mean, you're more than welcome to, and it's going to very much be kind of a, you know, beta testing situation if you're going to be using this there. It still needs to be fleshed out a bit more. It's still in development, but again, also do keep in mind that yeah, you're not going to be able to save your game progress, unfortunately. But that is to say, that is how the situation is right now while I'm recording this in March of 2022. So I don't think this is going to be the situation going forward even years from now. I think it's just going to improve, and even this specific point that I'm talking about is kind of going to be a blip in regards to issues, but I think it's going to improve. I have no doubts about that. Now, the other issues that I've run into are occasionally, if I'm playing a game, I soft reset the PlayStation 2, I go back into OPL, or I might just even you know, restart my system and go back into OPL, I'll try and start this up and I'm not able to get my games to show up. Although that seems to be documented really with the MC2 SIO, it's as simple as ejecting the micro SD card, popping it back in, and then typically your games should show up at that point on OPL. Not a big deal. I did also notice that I was having issues being able to save my settings on OPL, where many times if I was saving settings, it would just try and save my settings indefinitely, and it just wouldn't break out of that. So I'd have to restart the system, and of course my settings that I changed were not saved there. And that is why it is important if you are going to be using this specific version of OPL, when you download that archive file from Helder's site, there's going to be an OPL folder, and you need to bring that along with you. If you have one that you already have on your OPL setup, it's going to be recommended just back up that folder and override it with these settings here, but you're going to want to use the settings and configuration files that Helder provides, because this is known right here to happen. Now, I've talked about the software plenty, but are there any negative things I have to say in regards to the hardware itself for the MC2 SIO? Honestly, not really. If, if you really have to push me to say something here, and this might be a little bit more user error on this, but I'll just say this to be objective on here, the slot to put in the micro SD card, it is just maybe big and wide enough that when you're putting in the micro SD card, you might accidentally slip it into the rest of the case itself, which then requires you to open up, like physically open up the MC2 SIO casing and then retrieve your micro SD card from inside of it, put it back together and then slide it in properly like so. 
ask me how I know. No, seriously, just ask me how I know this very obscure thing that probably very little people are going to run into. <laughs> so overall, what are my thoughts on the MC2 SIO? This thing is awesome. <laughs> this thing is awesome. Now, I will say I had no doubts that I was going to enjoy using this, but my goodness, the MC2 SIO, the MX4 SIO project overall, this is the real deal in terms of loading games on the PlayStation 2. It's fantastic. It's easy enough to use. It's great. It has all the convenience of USB without all the slowness that comes with it. So if you have the opportunity and if you really want to weigh out your options, and if you're open to either going with a USB drive that you have lying around or spending a little bit of money getting something like the MC2 to SIO and delving into the MX4 SIO project, this is a no-brainer right here. This is a fantastic way of playing games on the PlayStation 2. It's convenient, it's great, it's quite affordable to get into as well, and I mean, micro SD cards works out well enough. The MX4 SIO project is fantastic. The development I've seen behind OPL is, is just, the progress is absolutely astounding. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing the progress here in the next few months and even years on OPL and on the MX4 SIO project. And even many of the issues that I've brought up here, I have no doubt that those are going to be temporary issues that will be remedied and patched out and really just improved upon over the next few years as the community is still lovingly supporting the PlayStation 2. So overall, can I recommend this? Absolutely. I think overall the MC2 SIO is fantastic. I think the project is fantastic. And I think this is an amazing way to play games on the PlayStation 2. And yet again, I will say, if you're torn between, hey, USB or MC2 SIO, if you've got a little bit of money, like 20 bucks to put into the MC2 SIO, it's a no-brainer get this thing. It's great. Anyways, that is about it for this video, this review. I do one more time want to thank Helder for sending this out for purposes of review over to the channel. It's been much appreciated and this thing is going to be getting a lot more use off camera as well. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.